In today's show, we're going to talk about Power Apps with SharePoint attachments. So we all know you can use the form control to get SharePoint attachments up there, but you know, it's not a lot of fun. So what we're going to talk about today is how we can use flows to get attachments into SharePoint from Power Apps. And we're not just going to do files, we're also going to do images from a pen input. That's right, if you sign it, we can get that attached or taking a picture with a camera and how to get that attached. So we're gonna learn some of those mechanics today and figure out how to solve this problem of SharePoint attachments with Power Apps. But first, here's our intro. Hi, my name is Shane Young with Power Apps 911. Those guys, and today we're gonna to dig into Power Apps and SharePoint attachments. So this was once I get a lot of questions about here and there, and I'm always like, eh, attachments are no fun. I've never been a huge fan of attachments, but I get you guys have needs to use attachments. So I finally sat down and made this video, and really the key here is gonna be that we're going to send our data, right? So whether that's a file or a pen input or a camera image, like whatever it is we wanna send as an attachment, we're gonna send that over to Flow. Flow is gonna process that, Flow is going to create that for us. And so then that kind of gives us a lot more flexibility. The other nice thing with this is once you understand how this works, it lets you start to build on it with other ideas. Like I know some of you have wanted to be like, all right, I want to attach a file to the item and then read that information in and push that into a SharePoint list as like raw data. You could learn to do that, right? We're not going to get that far down the rabbit hole today, but this opens up the door to us going deeper with future videos. And the whole reason I'm throwing all this out here is because I'm working on my Power Apps and Power Automate and Power BI class for SharePoint. Uh, we have a live recording of that coming up in about a month. And so, or maybe three weeks, I don't know, soon. And so I'd love to see you guys come join me for that class. And so I thought I'd kind of give you a preview of what we talk about in that class. So anyway, all the blah, blah, blah. Let's switch over to my desktop and play with attachments. I thought we'd start by just walking through the things I built so you can see it, right? So you can understand what's going on if you're not understanding what we're about to cover. So the idea here is that I want to create a new item. And so we're going to pass a couple fields and we're going to attach a file and we're going to press one button and then whoop, 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 one fail swoop, it's all going to go over. So title field is demo one. I know, very creative name, Shane. I threw a choices field in here. I don't know why. I thought it gave us something else to show along the way. So boom, boom. We're going to attach a file. And we're going to go over here to my desktop. And over here on my desktop, let's grab this lovely picture of Chewy relaxing. It turns sideways, we don't care, whatever. Okay, so that's it, right? So just a couple quick inputs. And then like if we scroll down here, this is the actual SharePoint list. You can see that right now a title RR is the last one, so it won't get added to the bottom of the list. And you also might be asking yourself as we go through this, like, hey, why are you using images? Does it only work for images? No, images are just easier for us to visualize, but everything here works just fine. If you're using Excel, Word, PDF, it doesn't matter the file type. We're just using images because they're visualized better. So here we go, we'll say create and upload. Little spinner goes roo, 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 roo. And after a second, it finishes. And if we scroll down to the bottom now, we should see title demo one. And if we click on the little view thing, there's Chewy relaxing, yay! So we attached a file, not using a form control, but using some independent pieces and passing it through a flow. And if you've seen my video on uploading documents directly to SharePoint, right? There'll be a link up there somewhere. It's a very much a play on that concept. It's just integrating attachments in the process. Let's take a quick look at the flow that kind of made this happen. So if we go over here to flow, and here's my flow, so we'll say edit. And so here you're gonna see that we're just using the regular Power Apps trigger. We're going to use create item, right? I didn't have to create the item with flow, but I just thought this was another chance to remind you guys that you can create these that way as well. And so we're just passing as dynamic content, that title field and that color field that we passed. And note, even though favorite color is a choices field in uh, Power Apps or in SharePoint, we are able just to pass the text. We're just passing the text power purple or red or pink or blue. And then that is going to go directly in. You don't have to do any shenanigans to use it. I thought that was nice. So then once I create the item, you'll notice here under create item, there, are, there is no option for attachments. So in order to do attachments, you then you're gonna use a separate command, add attachment. And so here, same site, same list. And then we're using the dynamic content, the ID from the previous step. And then we are going to uh, pass in the file name from SharePoint. And then we have to use the old base64 to binary expression to convert the base64 that we're gonna send from Power Apps 
into the format that SharePoint wants it. Boom. We're responding to Power Apps. We'll talk about why that is in a minute, but we're not actually sending anything back. We're just responding. We'll talk about that. So, in a nutshell, that's all it takes. But that works just fine, right? That same flow supports a file attachment like we did here. If I wanted to attach a signature, right? So, sig, change the color, it doesn't matter. Let's just draw a smiley face. There you go. And then if we say create and upload here, we get the spinny wheel again. And a few moments later, if we scroll to the bottom, sig, and we can preview it. And there's my smiley face. That's two. The third one I promised you was attached with a camera. Same type of thing. So I have an extra camera over here. Don't you all have two cameras? And so here we'll just go webcam. And then we will set this to pink. We will give you a nice smile. Cheese. Oh gosh, that is terrifying. I don't even know if a mother could love that ugly face. But there it is. And now we'll say create and upload. We get the spinner again. And now if we scroll to the bottom, we should see webcam and... <laughs> oh, I apologize for the scary imagery. Hopefully YouTube doesn't uh, get mad at me. So there you go. So those are the different options, right? We're, if we look at create and upload our button, it's the same, roughly the same for all of them. And so we're going to build, rebuild all this together, but I just want you to see that there is no forms involved. There is no form on success. No, nothing like that. Okay. So how do I build this, right? That's the fair question. So the first piece of the puzzle is we're going to go over here and make a new screen. And what we want to do is we want to do uh, a text input, right? So we, we need to get that title field. So we'll just make that one for title. And then we'll do a second input. You guys want to do choices again? I, I thought the colors were fun. So we'll do a drop down for those. And in the drop down here, we're going to say, I want to use the choices function against my employees dot favorite color. And so remember the choices function goes to a SharePoint choices column or a Dataverse choices column and returns all the values, right? So in SharePoint, those are the acceptable colors according to SharePoint. So Power Apps is showing us so we can choose those. Okay, on this side, pretty easy setup. I'm gonna go ahead and rename this as well to input T for title and then DDF for favorite color. So that way we know what they are in the formulas when we use them, right? So that is step one. Step two is that we need to be able to get a um, file in there, right? So whether it's the pin input, the camera, or the attachment control, it doesn't matter. We want to be able to pull that in. And so in order to pull that in, the trick, uh, we'll start with the attachment control, is you have to use a form, right? So what you're going to do is you're going to insert a form onto the screen. For any SharePoint list in the universe, right? Doesn't matter. I'm going to use employees here. It could be a different one altogether. Doesn't matter. The reason we're doing this is we want to steal the attachment control. And the only way to steal it is to get it from here. So if I scroll down, there's an attachment control. You're going to highlight just the control and say control C, click out of your form and control V, and now you have an attachment control. Now, once you've got the attachment control, you can delete the form, right? So the form is gone. Bye-bye. And then what you're going to do is you're going to fix it. So you see some errors up here. So if you hit the drop down, say edit the formula bar, you can see that the border color has got a formula it doesn't understand. I don't care about the border color, so I'm just going to make it black. Then we're going to hit the drop down again. Items. I don't need items. So just delete that clear, empty. Cool. And then last but not least, the tooltip. Same thing. Don't care. Delete that out. Oh, I thought it would be happy. Oh, there's one more. So hit the drop down one more. And then the display mode. We do care about this. This one needs to be display mode dot edit, right? If you want people to use your control, we just put it there so they could use it. It's got to be edit. So there you go. There are the three things, but now we have the control. I'm going to rename this to attacher. I don't know. Weird name. So we have the attacher. Okay. So those are the first pieces of this puzzle. Now, the other thing that we learned about, especially if you've already done the upload before, is the attachment control doesn't spit out images the way that we want or files, right? Word, Excel, PowerPoint, we'll do it Excel this time or something, right? Doesn't matter, it doesn't spit them out the right way. So you have to pass everything through an image control. So media and then image control, put this on the screen. And what I want you to do here is I want you to set the image to be last 
Right, that's a function of uh, attacher, attacher dot attachments. So attacher dot attachments is a table of all the attachments. And so by putting last like this, this is saying give me the very last record that was attached, and then do dot value, and that's going to return whatever it gets attached. So we can test that real quick, hit play, attach a file, and this is where working with images to start are easier because you can visualize things, right? So let's grab Chewy's nose. Hmm, grab that cute little nose. There you go. So you can see that we got our formula correct, right? This is why you use images to start. It's going to work the same. We're going to do, I promise we'll do Excel, but it works, uh, it's easier to visualize. Okay, so that's the first piece of the puzzle, right? It's inputs. So we need three inputs to get the data in. Now what we're going to need is we need to get down to the base 64 of this image. And so if we throw a button on the screen, right, this will be our little upload button. We're going to go back over here and we're going to steal some of this code. Oh, steal some of this code. We're going to steal these two pieces. And we'll talk about them as soon as we get them over there. And remember, if you've done the upload before, this is the same code, just modified for this example. Okay. So set var demo from attachment control is going to use the JSON function to take whatever's in image one. Well, we want not image one, we want image six. We got to update our code. So whatever image is there, take that and then include the binary data. So this line, this section right here is going to take the file that we just attached and encode it in base 64, which is all the A's and the B's, the ones and the twos, the zeros, all the inner guts that make up that beautiful picture of Chewy's nose. Okay, and that code doesn't change. So whatever your image control is named, that is going to be what you put here. And then you're going to take that JSON output and you're just going to save it into a variable. I called it var demo from attachment control. I don't care what you call it. You need to put it in there though. Once you've done that, then this code is 100% the same, right? This code does not change because this code just works from the name of that variable. So whatever you stored into var demo from attachment control, it's stripping off the header and the footer, so we just get the guts, okay? Not gonna go through all of that, but that mid function is just finding the, the comma, getting rid of everything in front of the comma, and then it's dropping the very last character for us. I don't ever try to rewrite it, I just copy and paste it from my apps. And speaking of my apps, remember if you go out to training.powerapps911.com and click on the YouTube library, you can su subscribe out there and you can just download this whole working app, right? All my thousands of subscribers out there all get access to all these files. So you can just download this working file and not have to sit there and pause the video and copy all this character by character. So up to you though. Okay, so now that we've got that, that gets the base 64 only, which is what we're gonna need in flow. So speaking of flow, let's go write a flow. So we're gonna go over here. We're not gonna mess with this one. We're gonna start with a new one. So I'll say create, leave that one there. We're gonna do an instant cloud flow and we're gonna set power apps or trigger and we're just gonna call this attach video. There you go. We'll say create. Now this is using the power apps V1 trigger for flow. You could use the V2 trigger, the steps are different. I don't love those steps as much as I love those these steps, so I just use the V1 still, but up to you. So following me, use this one, okay? So the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to create an item in SharePoint. So we're just gonna search for SharePoint, create, SharePoint create item action. Where do I want to do that? Well, for me, it's my site called Power Apps Videos, where you do it, up to you, and then my employees list. Do, 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 right there. Okay, and so then it's like, all right, if you want to create an item in SharePoint, and remember, we could have done this in Power Apps with a patch, for example, and then just pass this ID, but I thought it was fun to do it over here, a little different flavor. So for the title, what we're going to do is we're going to ask in Power Apps. Now, be careful. This is where you guys are going to leave comments over the next four years and be like, hey, I messed this up and I'm getting the wrong thing. So ask in Power Apps, you got to be very particular about when you click this. Because when I click this, it now made a new dynamic content called create item title. So that's one piece of input. We were doing favorite color. So I went down here. I'm going to say enter custom value. Opens up dynamic content. You don't want to reuse this one. So you're going to say see more, and you're going to ask in Power Apps a second time, right? We want two inputs. We now have two ask in Power Apps, okay? 
So what happens a lot of times is people, if you click that button, asking Power Apps five times, then there's gonna be five pieces of data you have to pass even if you're not using them. So far, I only want two, I've got two, we're doing great. So that will create the item, okay? Now we've created the item, now what we wanna do is we want to attach an item to the, uh, or attach the file to the item we just created. So we're gonna do a new step here. We're going to search for SharePoint attach, add attachment. And notice there's other ones, forgetting attachments, deleting attachments, pulling out the guts of attachment, right? There's more to learn with it, but for today, we're just worried about adding. Same site, so Power Apps videos again for me, right there. List name, same list. I wish Power Apps just, or Power, I wish Flow, Flow just knew what I was doing, so it would just make this faster, but it doesn't. So there's those two. Now the ID, so what ID do you want to pass it to? Well, from create ID, it had an ID, create item, it had an ID. So there it is. Now keep in mind, remember, if you created the item over in SharePoint or you already had the item in SharePoint, you just wanted to attach to it, then we could have just said, ask in Power Apps for the ID and not done all this create item, right? This is not, you don't have to do it this way. You just need to understand how the pieces connect. So for the file name, I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna go down here. I want to ask in Power Apps again. Now, if you're looking carefully, right? I moved my face out of the way, hopefully. You see the two that we've already asked for. We don't want those. We need to do another one, but it doesn't offer. So what you have to do is you have to say, see more. Now you have ask in Power Apps. Now when you click on ask in Power Apps, now we have three. Last but not least, we need to create a fourth one. So put your cursor in content of the file. Same drill, go down here and then say see more, and then ask in Power Apps. And so now we have four, right? Add attachment file content, create item title, create item favorite color, and add attachment file name. Four things to ask for. I'm telling you, it's a common mistake. So if you get out of whack, the best thing to do is just delete the flow and rebuild it, right? We should have four things we're done. Okay, now we're not actually all the way done though. So hover over this one, make sure you understand that this is add attachment file content, because weirdly enough, even though most of the universe uses base64, SharePoint stores everything in binary. So Power Apps is gonna send base64 over. If you save base64 into your attachment columns, it'll, it'll work, it will not error, but then you can't see the file because it's trying to show that base64 is binary, it's all confused. So what I need you to do now is I need you to delete this out. I need you to go to here to expressions and type in base, and there you go, base64 to binary. Open your parentheses, and so if you kind of click out of there, you see how there's open and close, so we want to put our dynamic content right there. So I get my cursor between the two parentheses, and so now you say dynamic content, you scroll to the bottom, make sure you pick the right one, we want add attachment um, file content, okay? Make sure you pick the right one, that will put that in there, you don't have to worry about what it says, it did all the work, say okay. So there you go. There is our flow, right? We've got um, ask content for title, ask content for favorite color. And if you want to ask for more things, ask for more things. You can fill out all of these. I don't care. I just want to show you how to do one. And then add attachment, the ID from the item we just created. File name is ask in Power Apps. And this is an expression that is wrapping our last fourth one. That's it. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say save. All right, it's ready to go. It's happy. Back to Power Apps we go. All right, so over here in Power Apps, we got the base 64, we just need to send it. So what I would do is I'm gonna throw an extra button on the screen, then I'm gonna go to Action and Power Automate. This will show you all your flows. I have like 200. You do not have 200, I hope, because it's a pain in the butt. Somewhere in here, hopefully at the very bottom, let's see. Of course not. So I gotta scroll through here now slowly and find, so there's attach test, but we wanna attach video. Okay, I did it out all the scrolling. It's sometimes a pain butt for me to find these things. There's no search, there's no easy way, I just have to scroll. So there you go, there's attach video, we're gonna add that. That's gonna make this a data source in my Power App. And now that it's a data source, now what I want you to do is copy this out, Control C, and then just delete this button, bye bye button. Because what it did by putting that button and saying you had, had a flow, there is attach video as a data source. So now we can go to the real button. We're gonna go down here, we'll go to a new line, so shift enter, paste that in, and look, it wants four things for me. Title, favorite color, add attachments, and add attachment file content. Perfect, that's what I wanted to give it. 
So for our title, what was our title? Our title is input T, right? So inpt.text, comma, favorite color value, that's gonna be drop down F dot selected dot value. So that'll pass whatever color you've chosen. Pretty straightforward. For the attachment file name, so this is one piece that'll vary depending on how you're inputting this, but since we're using the attachment control, it knows the name of the attachment that we just did. So we're just gonna do that same thing again. Last, uh, what was our attachment control? It was uh, attacher, right? Weird name I made up. Last, attacher.attachments, that same formula again, but this time instead of .value, which was the guts of the file, .name is the name of the file. Third piece, last but not least, we need to do the file contents, which is this var base 64 only that we just did. Control C, Control V, boom. So that should create our item and attach it. So let's try. We'll make we'll name it please work. We'll set the favorite color to green. We'll just rock with Chewy's nose, looks good. We'll press the button and we'll hope. So if we go over here to SharePoint real quick and go to employees, scroll to the bottom. There's please work, I like that. And there's green, I like that. And so last but not least, let's click on it and make sure that the file attachment actually works. So we'll go over here and click on Chewy Nose. And there's our adorable pup, yay! All right, now we've got the adorable pup. We know that this works. So what I owe you now, right, because you all are doubting me still that this will work with a real file. So we'll get rid of that one. We'll say, uh, please work Excel. We'll change Excel. I guess I should use green for Excel. Excel can be teal, 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 teal. I don't know, whatever that color is. We'll say attach file. We will look on my desktop. I think I have an Excel file, a different name, very complicated Excel file. We'll say open. Notice that the image control is still here. It doesn't show anything because there's nothing to show. But so now we'll press the button. And then if we go back over here and we'll X out of this one, we'll do a little refresh. Scroll to the bottom, please work Excel, teal. All right, those two pieces work. We'll click on it. And then finally we'll say a different name, Excel. Da-da! This works with any type of attachment. We just use images because they're easier to visualize. So if you were building this app though, right, you don't want your users sometimes to see the attachment, sometimes not. So what I would do is I would just take this control and make the visible false. And so then that way they would never see what they had attached. Well, there you go. That's how you attach a file. Now you're thinking, okay, Shane, that was a long time. You're gonna spend another half hour to teach us how to do the other two? No, no, I'm not. So if you wanted instead of attaching using an attachment control, you want to use um, the pin input. Let's do it. We're gonna delete that out. Uh-oh, lots of errors, that's okay. Insert, input, pin, oh, text, pin input. Put it right here. Okay, step one is we gotta make the image control happy, right? So edit the formula bar. There is no more attacher to attach, so that's why it doesn't work. So then we'll just delete that out. And what would we use here? We would say, I want you to be pin input two, right? Which is a pin input we just added, dot image. And so then now, if we kind of scribble, it should show up. Oh, let's make this visible again, right? This is why you like to have you use images so you can see that your things are working. There you go, dots connected. We go over to here, it's mad. What is it mad about? The image control didn't change, so it's not mad about that. It is mad because it doesn't have the file name to reference anymore. Oh, so then we'll just hard code the file name to be signature.png, just like that. Hit play, hit the button. Oh, it's called Please Work Excel. Sorry, there'll be two of those over here. No big deal, right? You understand. We'll refresh this page. Scroll to the bottom. There's a second Please Work Excel. It is also teal. And now if we go, oh, it's probably the red one. I don't know, it's this one, I think. I don't know, we'll click on it, we'll find it. And this says attachment signature.png. And there is my lovely scribble. There you go. That's how you do a pin input. And then you also wanted me to do a camera control. Fair enough. Delete. Oh, this is mad again. 
We'll go up here to media, camera. We want it to use camera one, which is that one. Hi. Okay, so then now we need to take the picture with a camera control. So I'm going to just throw a little icon and add, and then we'll go right here and we'll search for a camera. And we'll use a camera aperture this time, yeah, whatever. Um, before we set that one, we're gonna go here to the camera control and say, hey, your stream rate is 100. And then we'll go right here and say, set var camera, yeah, sure, to a camera two dot stream. This will create a variable that has the camera um, image in it, pink. Go to the image control and say, hey, you, use var camera. Mm, there you go. And so then now we'll just go change this. I'd probably change this instead of signature.png to be camera.png. And if you want to have a text input for them to provide a file name, great, right? All that needs to go between these two commas is string that matches that you'll use for the file name. So whether it's computed like or it's hard coded like this or it's an input you take from them or you use a formula to concatenate it, I don't care. Just needs to be a file name. But there you go. So let's take a pic better picture. I am ugly. No two ways about that. Let's change this to please work camera. And let's set the color this time to be blue. I'm wearing a blue shirt today. We'll say button. And as you can probably guess, if we go over here, down at the bottom, please work camera, blue. Click on that, scroll to the bottom, camera.png. Oh my gosh, that's ugly. All right, let's get away from there. So there you go. You, right, that's the beauty of this technique, right? Like once you understand how to use that ad attachment control, how you send it base 64, it doesn't matter. You can massage it however you see fit and it will be happy with you. So whether it's pen input, camera control, an attachment control, you're referencing some file you're picking out of a document library, it doesn't matter. If you can generate the base 64 and send it over, Flow will get that into attachments for you. So, uh, I'm gonna get off the screen where I'm seeing myself in duplicate. So there you go, so that is all of the pieces. Remember, if you wanna download this, you can just go out to training.powerapps.com and sign up for the YouTube library. Speaking of training.powerapps.com, will you humor me for a second? So if you go out here, um, right, so this is where you can sign up for the YouTube library to download the recordings of all these and all the apps that I upload with them, yay. And then these are the live courses. So this is all, the schedule's always changing, um, but we can see here in a couple weeks, we've got the February class, uh, there's Power Platform for SharePoint, Power Apps, Power BI, Power Automate, all of those. So, and if you're like, Months from now, you're like, February 2022? That's like last year. It's okay. We have new, more live classes. Check out the page. Cool? Okay. So that's everything I've got for today. Um, you know, hopefully this helps. If you've got more questions, more ideas, I know you do. I know there's more things you want to do with attachments, but we kind of ran out of time today. Um, but there's a lot more fun that you can have once you understand these basic mechanics of them. So leave me ideas below for the follow-up attachments video. We'll make sure that we get those out. And I guess with that, I'm going to say thanks and have a great day. Hey, me again. Before you go, click on the subscribe button, right? Join the list of 100,000 plus people that subscribed already. Or if you need any help, right? Check us out at Power Apps 91. We do big projects, little projects. We do training. We do everything and we can help you. Or if you want to see more videos, you probably do. Then just click on the playlist above. Cool. Thanks and have a great day.